Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Gift of Touch. So that's basically a little program we have for persons living with advanced dementia. Now we know there are three things surrounding persons living with advanced dementia that make it a little bit difficult to engage them. Right? Because normally you will find them um, seated quite quietly in one corner and not really interacting much. So the whole purpose of having Gift of Touch is to draw them out from that shell and then to meaningfully engage them in activities, right? So, but before we start, there's just three things I would like uh, everyone to remember uh, when it comes to engaging persons living with advanced dementia, right? So the first thing is that they may or may not be aware of the surrounding environment. That's why we try and set it up as familiar as possible, something that's close to their heart, right? And then the second thing is that movement is sort of a reflex. So it means that they respond best with movement. So you notice throughout the gift of touch, a lot of it is gentle movements, uh, not so much talking, more movements of their limbs, of their hands and legs. And also the last things that you will notice that for persons with advanced dementia, having too many things happening at one time is often counterproductive. So often we try and make it as simple and as straightforward as possible. So that's the three things to remember about persons with advanced dementia. So, Going back to Gift of Touch, uh, the whole purpose of Gift of Touch is basically to stimulate the five senses, right? So later I'll be showing you how we set it up and how we can do it in the home. Also, it's about comfort and pain management. So hence you, you'll see the pillows, the blankets, the scents and the lights, all meant to come together to achieve the effect. Also, it's about sensory stimulation. So you'll see the various methods which we employ, right? But it's not hard and fast. It's not something that you have to do, it depends on how the person reacts. Because at the end of the day, uh, dementia care is about customizing it in such a way that caters to the person's needs and preferences. And then lastly, uh, it's about ensuring that whatever happens in this space, in this sanctuary, is meaningful for the person. So what this means is that it's often important, um, often vital, to understand what the person really likes or used to like and we'll incorporate those activities within the Gift of Touch session. So, um, thereby allowing us to have that meaningful interaction and creating that bond. Because, uh, like I mentioned at the start, uh, Gift of Touch is about drawing that person out of that shell and engaging with us once again. So now, we are moving on to how we set up Gift of Touch. So just need to remember that uh, overall, the main and most important thing of setting up the gift of touch environment is actually more about the comfort level of the person. So always keep in mind what the person likes or used to like or how the environment would be set up. So if we can think about what their favorite corner in the home looks like, uh, that, would, that would be quite indicative of what that particular gift of touch spot might appear to be. Right? So let's say there are four areas actually. Uh, that we will talk about when it comes to setting up the gift of touch, right? Um, so the first thing will be about lighting. Uh, second will be about music or sounds. The third will be the comfort level of the person. And then lastly, it will be about scent or the aromas uh, that are used in that space, right? So firstly, when we talk about lighting, we, we typically put one soft, warm lighting, right? So natural lighting often works best. Uh, so we don't want it to be too bright and too glaring, right? So something that I, I typically use, um, something cheap would be uh, a little pencil lighting like this. I just place it at the corner of the room. And uh, it allows me to toggle on with various lighting. So normally we'll choose uh, a lighting that the person prefers the most. Maybe the person likes blue, right? So uh, why not? Then we can use blue and just put it at the side. So that helps to enhance the overall experience that the person has when he's going through a uh, gift of touch. Right, so the second thing that we like to look at is actually about the music, right? Because um, music soothes how that session will be, so we like to use music to influence the emotions of the session. So one simple way of doing it would be uh, through Spotify. So you can choose the music, uh, something soothing like spa music. Yeah, so you can use Spotify or YouTube and just use it to help set that little atmosphere that you have at Gift of Touch, 
Yeah. Um, the whole point about selecting the music is choosing music that doesn't have vocals. Uh, because remember, when we're talking about too much stimulation or too much contrasting stimulation, uh, vocals will actually interfere with what they're trying to give. Maybe you're trying to tell the person something, but having music with vocals would actually kind of clash with it. So as much as possible, we typically would pick something soothing, like spa music, for example, something instrumental. Um, so moving on, uh, we know comfort is key because the whole goal of the gift of touch setup is for it to be a be the person's personal sanctuary, basically. So how does that look like for each person would differ, right? Um, so for example, we might want to have some photos uh, that were meaningful for the person, or we would choose pillows that are that were of patterns that they like. So allowing them to make that choice in terms of color, in terms of patterns, in terms of texture would help to encourage a more comfortable feel when you're setting up the gift of touch. Also, uh, when it comes to the chair, it's important um, that the chair has backrest and armrest typically. We, this is what we typically recommend because persons living with advanced dementia uh, typically would have issues sitting safely without the backrest or the armrest. So that is something that we should consider. Also, uh, as part of the theme of comfort, we will also maybe give a, I like to give a little blanket, right? Cause uh, it just adds to the comfort, comfort level of the person. Also, um, I typically will add like those soft rugs uh, so that they can place their feet. Cause uh, it's just something that just makes it more comfortable, uh, allows that person to be themselves. And so you can draw that person out as you engage them uh, during the give of touch session, right? So. The last uh, aspect of uh, the gift of touch setup, right, will be about sense, right? So um, we know that the, the sense of smell is one of the last thing that goes, uh, even despite the advancement of dementia. So um, it's very powerful. So we typically would pick a sense that we know that they like. So um, normally I like to use a little diffuser like this um, with some essential oils, just drip in a few drops. And then it helps to set the atmosphere for the next um, hour or so, or however long you intend to do give a touch for. So one thing that might come up is about when uh, is the time to have this give of touch session. So typically, um, the easiest way to go about thinking about it is actually um, about the person themselves, right? So if we notice and as we think back, for the person living with advanced dementia, uh, when is the time of the day where they are most active, right? Is it uh, after a shower? Is it after lunch, right? Is it after dinner? So those are the periods of time, right? Where you want to grab them and, and that's, that's when they're most alert. And so that's, that actually sets yourself up for success when you try and engage them with gift of touch in that period of time. Because that's, that's when they respond the most uh, towards you and your attempts to engage them. So why not, right? So taking advantage of uh, their alert periods, their on periods, and then engaging them. So normally we'll try and uh, observe them throughout the day, um, and then we, we kind of pick up like, uh, the person seems to be most alert during a period of time, and that looks different from different people. For some, it might just be where the person will keep their eyes open, they'll be looking around, right? Or they'll be fidgeting with their pillow cases or the pillows. So those are the times you want to look out for. When is the person most alert in the day? And then we take advantage of that by engaging them during those times with gift of touch. So just one last thing to remember is that uh, despite the many facets that I've been talking about when it comes to setting up, the overriding um, objective of setting up a gift of touch is for comfort to allow you to interact and or engage that person um, in a way that draws that person out and allows you to build bonds and have a good time. <laughs>